Hey, what's up, y'all? This your little brother, Antonio. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, I wanted to take a little time today to answer some questions and also just help some people deal with some things when it comes to fasting and how to get started, stuff like that. So I'm going to see who's going to join us, if anybody. I didn't announce this, so sorry. You guys, I didn't announce it. I didn't say nothing. But I just want to talk about it. Um, we'll talk about it for a few moments. Um, all right, I just want to see who clicks on them. If anybody clicks on it, if you want to talk about fasting and how you prepare your body and your mind, stuff like that. So. Let me just, I'm just going to be patient. Just going to be patient. Whenever you get on the video, if you don't mind, whenever you um, are connected, um, will you uh, let me know who you are? Let me know that you're on with me so I know who I'm talking to. A lot of times I like to address people and say, hey, um, some people say Fridays is the worst time to do uh, a live Friday um, afternoon, Friday evening, because people, uh, what's up, BJ? Because people are out doing their thing, but we also know even though people are out doing their thing, people are also still on their phones. So I want to come for a few moments um, and talk about how do you prepare your mind and your body for fast. Um, to just kind of get right to the point king you know how i do how we do um to kind of get right to the point to just start off um you have to really make sure my first point if anybody's gonna take notes for all the late folks in class um the first thing i think you have to be inspired you have to you have to know that it's your time to fast you know i may sound really weird but in my experience, you have to know that that's what you're supposed to be doing. First, first of all, if you're gonna, if you're gonna take upon yourself the agony, the pain, the stress, the the the, the turmoil of fasting, you you gotta first know that you're supposed to be fasting. That's the biggest thing. Like in anything in life, if you know you're supposed to be there, if you know you're supposed to be doing this, if you know you are in your purpose, if you know you're in the right place at the right time, and you might endure some hardships, but if you know in your heart that this is what you're supposed to do, like when people make a decision, hey, I ain't gonna eat pork no more, I'm not gonna eat uh, uh, red meat anymore, I'm not gonna drink, you know, alcohol anymore, you know, you have to know, like, this is my time, this is what I've decided to do, and no matter who's doing it around me, I've made a decision to say, no, I'm not going to do that. And that's something that I want to, first of all, you have to settle it in your mind that it's, it's, it's for you. It's your time to do whatever it is you want to do. So for me, anytime I start, I just kind of know. I know that I'm supposed to be fasting. I know that it's my time. I can tell my body's like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I can just tell. I don't know. I, it's hard for me to explain it to anybody. But when the time of fasting comes upon me and it does come upon you, it, it starts in your mind and you start thinking about it. You start saying, man, I don't want to eat that. And it's just this, 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 this little process. And your spirit is telling you like, like you need to push the plate away. But a lot of times that's happening and people ain't ready up here and they ain't ready in their heart because it's going to take heart and it's going to take mental fortitude to deal with everything that comes with fasting. So that's the first thing I would say. You got to deal with your mind. You got to deal with your mind. You got to deal with your mind. When you feel your body starting to say, hey, 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 you need to take some time and, 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 and say, OK, what's going on here? Because why don't I want to eat my favorite food tonight? Why do I why do I feel disgusted by this? Why do I feel like I just want to, you know, go off and just drink some water or some tea? And people feel that a lot of times, but they just ignore it. They just push past it and like, nah, man, I ain't going to do that. That's just me. No, that's that that could be something in your body that's that's responding to something that's acting up. 
you know, something in your body, your body could be like, man, I don't like this food you, you've been, you've been sending me, you know, I don't like this food you've been putting down and your body like, yo, yo, I don't like this because let's, let's talk about this. I'm, I'm going to divert just for a minute. What, what are fat cells? Which is mono, molecules, right? See, your body actually knows when you're eating toxins. People think the body is like, it's not intelligent. Your body is intelligent <laughs> even without your mind. <laughs> your body is intelligent. So look, when we eat foods that are filled with toxins, what happens? Well, number one, when you eat, number one, their insulin goes up. Number two, when you eat tox foods of that has toxins, the body says danger, danger, danger. Why? Because the body doesn't know what to do with poisons and toxins. It doesn't know how to, it doesn't know how to deal with that because the body wasn't created to, to, to digest and receive toxins. But the, but the creator knew that we would do that. So what does the body have to counteract that? It's something called fat cells, right? So when the, when you eat something, drink something, whatever, whatever, the body don't like the body sends out fat cells to do what? To surround the toxins so that it won't kill you and kill me. That's what it's trying to do, prevent sickness, illness, and death. The body is saying danger. We don't know what to do with that. We don't know how to digest that. We don't know how to deal with that at all. So the body says, send out these fat cells and farm. So the number one thing that a lot of people that are gaining weight, I'm not talking about people in prescription and people, people the doctor gave them stuff and people in stress. I'm talking about fat cells. What are, what are fat cells coming to do? Fat cells are coming to surround toxins. So the very first thing, if you even thinking about remotely doing a fast, the first step I would say is to start pulling back off of processed foods. Don't just go from today and then tomorrow you're doing a, 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 a liquid fast or a dry fast. No, one of the first things we need to do, in my opinion, I'm not a doctor, but I'm telling you, I've been studying this stuff for like six years. One of the first things we need to do is pull back from the food that has never had life. Look around you in your kitchen and say, what food in here have I been eating that has never had life? And how can something that has never had life give me life? Think about that. So the first step is to pull away from the dead food. You gotta pull away from the processed things. Something that's not natural. Something that didn't grow like that. Anything in a box or y'all know what processed foods are. Y'all know this fake stuff that we keep eating. Y'all y'all know all that and y'all, you know, people like all these questions. We know the, the, the toxins and the filthy food, the dirty food that, that we eat. We know, we know. You don't need nobody to tell you. You know that food that's in that box that don't give you no life. No, it appeases it appeases that habit that, oh man, I like this. It appeases those things. But I'm saying the first thing is get your mind right. And then once you say, yeah, okay, the first step. It's cause you gotta, you gotta, people be approaching this with so much stress and so much, you know, extra. It's like, no, step number one, I have to eliminate the intake. Uh oh, eliminate the intake of processed foods. The first thing, what have you been eating that you know your body doesn't know what to do with this thing at all. Your body doesn't know what to do with them crackers and potato chips. Your body doesn't know what to do with that candy bar. Yeah, I'm not talking about some dark chocolate uh, thing that you got. No, we ain't eat no, most of us ain't eat no dark chocolate pure. We, we straight going, <laughs> we going ham on the, on the straight sugar. You know what I'm saying? You got to accept the fact that your body was created to be healthy. You got to accept the fact that the body actually does have, you know, levels to it. In other words, it doesn't want us to put things in it. That's not good. If you, if you had a Bentley, I mean, I wouldn't put no 87 gas in no Bentley. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put, you would put that premium in the Bentley. Your, your body is a Bentley. Somebody say, say my body is a Bentley. My body is a Rolls Royce. My body is first class. You are literally the top of the line and we're putting this stuff in us, man, that the body is like, what is going on? And we wonder why we're sick. Everybody worried about COVID. Hardly nobody talking about the underlying conditions conditions that's been around way before COVID. Everybody afraid of COVID. Why? Most of us, because we know we ain't been living right. We know we ain't been doing right. Antonio, people that's healthy get sick too. I didn't say that. I'm talking about the fact that they saying these underlying conditions are a place 
that causes things like viruses and sickness to just straight up flourish. The biggest thing is I don't want any sickness and disease to have a grip on me. So therefore, since I know that, it, that this sickness wants the easy entrance into a life, how's that? Because we these underlying conditions, underlying. Man, you 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 major. Your body is premium and it needs premium stuff on the inside of it for it to operate like it wants to operate, like it wants to operate. First thing, the mind, am I ready for this? Am I really called to this? Two, if I am, have to make a decision. We have to make a decision to deal with this processed foods. I know a lot of people don't deal with this. People, I had like, we had like six people on here and now people gone, you know, I know people gonna be on and in and out cause folks don't want you to, man, people don't wanna talk about the stuff, man. You know, that's, that's number two. And so number one, your mind, number two, get rid of this stuff. So how do we, what, how do we start replacing it? We start replacing it with good things. Not, not, see, we ain't even on the fast yet. We're talking about what do we put in because what needs to happen is once we start getting rid of this stuff and then we start putting in something good, why? Because if we jump out there too fast and start fasting and water fasting and liquid fasting and all the other stuff, these toxins are going to begin to dump themselves in your body. That's what happens when you stop eating and the body now the digestive system picks up it says well guess what well it, the, the digestive system shuts down it doesn't have to worry about all this food and then now it starts doing some repairing autophagy starts happening i keep talking about autophagy which is like the body's way of it's like the body's uh uh trash company that goes in your body your cells mess with benign tumors all those things man it starts going in there cleaning us up um that's why I've been having bowel movements all the way up to day number 48 because the body is steadily cleaning itself over and over again. And you can go back and look at my videos from day one all the way to now to day 50. You can see my body literally shrinking, um, the inflammation, stuff like that. My stomach, everything. you can just literally see what the body is doing now that I've left it alone. Now that I left it alone, now I'm giving it fuel. you like, what, water? Yeah, water, fuel. Water helps with losing weight and getting out, fleshing out fat and all the other stuff. But we keep putting all that other stuff back in us. The stuff that brings the fat cells because they are the cavalry. They want to come and save this body and they want to shield this body. But my goodness, you can't have a billion fat cells in one body. If not, stuff just start going on and the body just starts. It's, it's, it's like the body is saving itself and it's destroying itself at the same time. You're like, what did you just say, Antonio? When we eat bad foods, fat cells come and surround it, and the body is literally blowing up, and it's like it the thing that was meant to save the body is now causing self causing destruction. That's crazy. Because we don't supposed to be having that many fat cells in our bodies like that. We don't supposed to be having that much toxins in our body, and the body is doing its best to protect us. But my goodness, we, we won't stop eating. Some of us are eating 10, 15, 20 times a day. And remember this, guys, every time we eat, insulin goes up. Every time. Even if you eat a healthy thing, insulin goes up. And some of us are dealing with diabetes, but imagine you were eating 15 to 20 times and insulin just steadily shooting into our body. Every time it keeps elevating. So imagine why uh, 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 diabetes and all that stuff is so prevalent because we keep eating. That's number three. You're going to have to come and you're going to have to deal with the fact that you're not going to be able to put everything in your mouth every time you want to eat it. If you're going to really have a clean fast and a moment for your body really to work on itself, you're going to have to deal with those facts of the fact that you can't eat when you want to eat and you can't put everything in your mouth. And I'm telling you, when you start fasting, you're going to have cravings. All this stuff is going to start coming up. Food, I mean, it, I mean, you would not believe it, but the thing, what has kept me doing this for 50 days in a row, when I deal with food every day, when I smell food every day, when I'm around food six to eight hours a day, what keeps me going forward? What keeps me going forward is that mirror and being unsatisfied with what's in that mirror and how I was feeling before. I haven't forgotten. Oh, just two months ago, laying in the bed, my back going crazy. The bottom of my feet, I don't know if that's gout. 
my toenails. I'm talking about my knees. I'm talking about, I mean, having a headache. I'm talking about my insides, my stomach feeling like something's wrong. I mean, being just fat and slouchy and lazy and slothful and all those things that I was dealing with. And so whenever I'm around fried chicken and I absolutely love fried chicken, I absolutely love pepperoni pizza. When I'm around those things, I could easily say, I want this. I want this. The reason why it keeps me from saying no is because I made up my mind before those things got presented to me. I, I made up my mind. I made up my mind. So you got to have a made up mind. See, I didn't even give myself, I'll do that. I didn't even give myself a certain date. Why? Well, I, I ain't set a date. Because why? Why put more pressure on myself? Because if you say, man, I'm going to go 20 days, man, that's going to be a hard 20 days. Why? And when you get done, you're going to go, most of the time, you're going to go right back into what you were doing before because also you have to prepare yourself to go into a fast. You have to prepare yourself for the time of the fast. And then you have to um, learn how to exit a fast. Some people just get to that date and they go straight to Piccadilly's. They enter that date, they go straight to Carabas. They finish fast in that moment. The next five minutes, they're at McDonald's. You can't do that if you're going to go on a fast, especially a prolonged fast. And many times, the way you start a fast is the way you end the fast. So what do I mean by that? So when you're getting your body ready for a fast, you don't just jump out there if that's what you decide to do. You don't just jump out there. You don't just do that. First thing you start doing, in my opinion, what I learned, you start getting you some raw food. So you got, if you like carrots and celery and apples and maybe some grapes, your favorite fruit, your favorite vegetables, start start incorporating I, you can't some people can't do this like drop of a dime it's like you got to start incorporating it into your life little by little okay grabbing an apple okay grabbing this okay uh, getting some blueberries okay getting some walnuts or some pecans or pistachios or whatever it is you got to start adding those things into your your diet right but eventually a week or two later you should be pushing that other food away. So so really before you start a fast and really get into it the right way, in my opinion, you should be a raw, you should be on raw for at least a week or two, or at least it's, it should be a big part of your diet. If, if it's not all your diet, you should be at least on something, raw fruits and vegetables and nuts and stuff like that for at least a week. I'm just talking about, because some people, especially people that ain't never fasted before, ain't never done, mm -mm. man, you gotta give your body a moment because I was saying earlier, Man, those toxins start getting dumped into your system and your blood. Man, that stuff can make you sick. I'm talking about super sick. I mean, when your body starts dumping all that stuff, when those fat cells start um, releasing that stuff, you know, because when you start fasting, what happens is autophagy starts going on, and then the fat cells starts releasing, it start, get, start, starts disintegrating, and all those toxins that it was held on, holding on to gets put into your bloodstream. And man, you got to deal with that. So how do you deal with that little by little? By changing the processed foods. Number one, we got, I won't, I won't get ahead of myself. So we got to stop what we're eating, how we're eating, right? And then, then we, then eventually when you know your body is ready, because when you start eating more raw foods and stuff like that, you're going to go start going, you should start going to the restroom more. You start, you know, having some bowel movements. That's going to start knocking up, um, pushing out some of that food that's been locked into the intestines. There's a lot of food that's been locked and, and waste that's been sitting there in our bowels and our colons for weeks and weeks and weeks a lot of times, right? I, 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 I told you guys, today's day number 50 for me, and I had my last bowel movement two days ago. I'm talking about a real bowel movement, but this one had the little pebbles, the little rocks, and what that tells me is I've had a blockage somewhere in my intestines because if you go study the types of poop, you, you can see by the, they talk to you about the size and what that represents. It's really, it's unprocessed foods. It's foods that my body could not process and they got jammed and stuck and they become like little rocks. Literally, they become like they're petrified. And this stuff will sit up inside of my intestines. And I told you, I haven't eaten since um, December the 3rd. And so what's that, January, two days ago? January the 16th or 17th? I'm talking about, and I'm not trying to be gross, y'all. I'm really trying to help. A pile of these things came out of my body. A pile. And I've already had probably 20 bowel movements. I've already had probably 20 bowel movements before two days ago. And steadily, and I'm not putting nothing in that's solid. 
that's telling us how bagged up this processed foods, this unprocessed processed foods. Meaning the body's like, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that. We're going to do the best we can and try to shrink some of it down. And, and there it is, a rock. And they just pile up. So like, so imagine imagine you on the freeway somewhere and all these cars are piled behind. And think about that last meal. And then behind that last meal was all those other meals that never got to be um, digested and properly processed. And it's a traffic jam. It's a traffic jam. It's a traffic jam. Why? Because we eat too much. We eat too many times. We eat too much, man. So imagine that. You eat, you ate, somebody might have ate seven times today. I mean, but, but I think they said the average person eats between 13 and 15 times a day. I think they said the average person picks up something and put it in their mouth 13 to 15 times a day. And not, a, and it's like, and it's like, it's unconscious. You ought to start counting just in your own life before you start fast. Just count every time you eat, you ought to get a little sheet of paper and just put a check, check. Every time you put something in your mouth, you will realize that 10, 15, 20 times you actually ate something. Remember, every time we eat something, insulin, even if it's good food, even if it's good food. So we got to deal with it. So we, so, so after you got your mind right, right? After you, you realize, okay, man, look at all these processed foods in my life. Okay. Now you got to start incorporating water and get rid of, don't drink your calories start getting rid of all that sugary drink and i, I started to do a, a, a video tonight at the store about the drinks man you can you can fool yourself yeah and not eat the solid foods but then the drinks that we're bringing in are just as sugary and just as detrimental as the food we, we try to kick so 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 water has to become your best friend you have to get it in your mind you know you know some good water, some good spring water, some good distilled water, whatever water you you like, some pH water, some alkaline water, some 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 mineral filled water, some magnesium water. Those are some of the things you need, and you know, and we'll talk about that later because we don't just need water. You need water that has um, minerals in it, or you need to be able to take minerals and your and your and your um, if the doctor allows you, if you're not on prescription, your minerals and stuff like that. Because when you do water fast you are, are literally rinsing out the minerals and that can impact your heart. So you have to take minerals while you're doing water fast so that your heart and everything, the, elect the electrical stuff and all the stuff in you that the minerals um, that you need as a mineral, you can't just take straight water. You need to have some minerals or magnesium, some potassium, all the stuff like that. Those are things that you need. You can drink water, but if you're fasting, you need water that has um, minerals in it. So like magnesium, or you need to take minerals on the side, magnesium, potassium, some people got uh, sodium, sulfate, that's a whole lot of other things, um, chloride. We need to have that if you're gonna fast. Now, if you're just drinking water because you love it, that's awesome because water will help you flush out the fat, especially if you're eating right, especially if you're eating right. So you gotta get your mind ready for, for, for water. And then when you start your fast, you gotta understand what type of fast you're on. You're gonna fast, okay, during the daytime, you're only gonna drink water, and then after three or six o'clock, you're gonna start eating. Um, you're gonna do a straight fast. You gotta, you gotta make up your mind on what you wanna do. You know, I would say just dip your toe in the water. This is not a race. Like, this is not a race. Don't say, well, man, I'm trying to do this, trying to, trying to get fast. Man, some of us, it took, it took us some years to get fat. It took us some years <laughs> to, to get to this point. So it ain't going to come off like that. Man, do you understand that the body is going to fight you tooth and nail? Do you realize that the body is going to fight you tooth and nail? That fat don't want to go nowhere. That once fat gets in there and it gets lodged in there, fat ain't trying to go nowhere. It don't want to go nowhere, man. Please, fat, like, whatever. I'm here now. You you mess me up and, you know, you can put me over here. Fat and move his family over to your to, to, to your gut area. Fat and moved over there in your organs and everything. Fat, like, man, I'm happy. I got to build me a house, man. I got me a car, all this stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out over here. Fat ain't going to want to leave. So you have, you have to realize that it's not going to be a sprint. I mean, think about it, y'all. I have not been eating solid foods since december do i look like now i'm skinnier but do i look like i'm a skeleton do i look like fat is just like laying down and saying man you know if my metabolism my metabolism is like well we just gonna let them get skinny overnight no 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 
It's it's a process. I've lost less than a uh, 50th day, 44 pounds. I've lost less than a pound a day. A, less than a pound a day. My, it, the body is like slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Now, do you need to work out like I do to lose weight on the fast? No. Actually, if you do it right, especially a water fast or dry fast, mm -mm, the body the body will just, you lose weight. You don't have to go into the gym. But I know that I'm speeding it up. I know that I'm speeding up the process when I do work out because while I'm pulling more calories, I'm causing my body to go in there and really dig. And I wanted to dig. I wanted to. I wanted to kick out as. Much, I wanted to burn as many calories as I can that that's been stored. Because a lot of us don't know. You can go look it up. Some of us got thirty to ninety days worth of fat stored that the body can live off of without us eating a, eating a drop of anything. I know y'all think that's crazy. Go look it up for yourself. Go look up. Say how how long can the body live without food? Uh, and some of this stuff gonna tell you two three days. It's a lie. Your body can live a long time. Your body got a lot of stuff stored inside of it. Even people who are skinny don't know how much energy and how much food reserves the body has on the inside. And this is stuff that I learned and it just blew me away that we're eating because it's a habit. We're not eating because we're hungry. We're not eating because, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're just eating because that's what we want to do. But the body don't need all that food. Man, they even say some people who who religiously fast and animals that fast, they live up to thirty three to forty percent longer than people that eat regularly. I said they said some, now not everybody. It's not a hard and fast rule, but they say a lot of animals that eat less, and laboratories and other things, people that eat less tend to even have longer lives because man, the body just doesn't want to spend all that time dealing with that food. So, so it's it's about your mind. It's about making up your mind what you want to do. It's about pushing out the processed foods. It's about to start to incorporate raw foods into your body. Why? So the body can start dealing with those toxins and you don't have to deal with those toxins with an empty stomach yet, right? And then once you get to the point, water has to become your best friend. Water. Water. Your type of water. I, I wouldn't get no just no purified water. Go get some you know what I'm saying? Some spring water, some alkaline water, something, some magnesium water, something with minerals in it, uh, electrolytes and stuff like that. Um, it's, 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 it's important. And so once you make a decision, like you may say, I, I told you I'm only going to fast for three days and that's cool. That's what you decide. So write it out and, 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 and give yourself a plan. That's what I was like. Write it out and give yourself a plan. What is that going to look like? How are you going to fast? How long are you going to fast? So it's, it's, it's before you write out your plan during and then how you're going to end it because how you end the fast is important. You can't just go from zero and then right back to a hamburger. Some people's stomach will tear them up. Some folks got can do whatever they want to do. I get that. So how you start it, you, it's a lot of times how you end it. You plan all that stuff out. You plan all that stuff out. You plan out, okay, when I get ready to stop this, okay, I'm going to get some apples, I'm going to get some blueberries, I get some few nuts and stuff like that, and you and a little watermelon, because you can go, please go Google this stuff. They got a lot of videos and a lot of, um, a lot of things written upon this by doctors and hospitals about how you start a fast, how you, how you go into a fast, and then how you end a fast. You know, when you on a when you on a fast, you, you can have things like because it doesn't have a lot of calories, you have things like coffee, water, green tea, stuff without sugar. You gotta you gotta get rid of the sugar, even the honey. I mean, all those things you gotta just push off to the side if you're gonna do it the right way. Because one of the reasons why we're doing it, we're giving the body a chance to operate without all that stuff. Now, me, I'm doing juices and smoothies because I'm not going a hard, I didn't start out the hard, hard way. But Possibly in the next week or so, I may be shifting over to all water. I'm, just, but now my body is really prepared to do its thing. Why? Because it's, I've given it 50 days, literally, to have smoothies and juices and celery and V8 and you know all this different type of stuff. I've been feeding myself and taking care of business. And now, if I decide to switch over to all water, my body will be better suited for it. Why? Because I've prepared it. These first 50 days is really the preparation. That's for me now. Somebody might just do two days. It's still it's still the same. The way you start. And and oh, I remember this. Don't binge before you go on a fast. Your mind, listen to me. Your mind will start telling you that. 
your mind will set you up. When you start speaking and writing down, I'm going fast, your mind is going to start looking at ways to to get, it's going to be like, oh my God, uh, 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 Mindy's getting ready to fast. Oh my goodness. And that's thing you know, you're going to, you, you're going to, you're going to be faced with an opportunity to binge. And, and what that means is you're going to fail before you even start. You're going to fail before you even start. This is what I would say. Because if you eat all that food, you you open yourself up to the hunger pains. If you're going to fast, why open yourself up to all of that hunger, that hunger lust, right? Here you are. Here you are you're going to fast tomorrow. And today you just went to Cracker Barrel. You just ordered you two, two plates of pancakes, bacon, eggs. You got your favorite Doritos. You went and got some Coke. You went and got you your favorite dessert and all that stuff. And now you getting ready. You getting ready to go fast. You just open yourself up to 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 that lust, to that thing that you were dealing with. You would just open yourself up. So now you just took in five thousand calories. You just opened yourself up. Now your body like, oh my God, I want this. I want it because whatever you feed, the body continues to want right so whatever you feed the body says i want more of that so when you stop eating the body says i don't want to eat and when you eat a lot the body says i want to keep eating so when you get ready to go on a fast so many people make the mistake of binging you, you make a mistake of binging don't binge before you start fast don't do it it's hard the mind it's, the, it's in the mind it's not in your it's not in your stomach it's not in your body it's a mind the mind it's, a, it's about survival the body has its own survival mechanisms the body says My, what you gonna go without food you gonna do what so I would say don't even don't even talk about it a lot out loud like literally your body hearing you I know it sounds so crazy man I'm telling you, when you make up your mind about this, you need to just go go in silence. Don't say a whole lot. Don't 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 ask a whole lot of people their opinion. Don't debate in, and out. Just make up your mind and move in silence, and don't give your body and your mind and your ear gates all the opportunity to plan against you. I'm telling you, your body, when it understands what you want to do, it will start it will start um, creating a plan so that you can fail. The body will start creating a plan. Literally, it will start secreting stuff. You will start tasting stuff. The the the, the candida, the the yeast in your stomach. I'm telling y'all, man. If y'all study just the yeast in our stomachs, it's like a person. I promise you, the gut is like a human being. It's like another brain. If you start studying what that candida does, the the yeast, it is it is crazy. What is in our gut? It is so. It is crazy. What's in your gut? And so you don't want to give the body time to strategically um, bombard you with all this stuff the day before you get ready to go on your fast. The day before, the day before, next thing you know, you just ate 15,000 calories. You went to all the, <laughs> you went down the main strip in your city. You got, I'm going to get this Whopper. I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this, this Big Mac. I'm going to go over here and get these burritos. I'm going to get my pizza. And there you are sitting in the room. And now you just set back your fast like four days. Now, even if you go do the fast, think about it. Now your body has to take the time to go and get rid of all that food you just put in it. It's going to take the body three, four, five days just to get rid of that last meal you just ate. Not including the last two months that's still sitting in you. Y'all ever go eat somewhere and then a couple days later you burp and you can taste the meal you had a day or two ago? You're like, hold on. Think about that. You went and ate day two three days go and you go burp uh. and next thing you know you can taste that meal still and that meal is still with you and you know you ain't had no bowel movement think about that y'all we go eat all this food all this solid food and we keep eating and we keep eating and we keep eating and we keep eating and we know we ain't had no bowel movement don't you ever think about that like man you ain't had a bowel movement in a week where's that food going where is that food at? It didn't just magically disappear. Where is the byproduct of that food that you just ate? You ate a baked potato. You had cheese. You had sour cream. You ate the peel. Uh, um, you had a cheeseburger. You had cheese. You had all this stuff on there. You had bacon. You had all this stuff for the. And that, I'm, I'm just talking about today. <laughs> and last week it happened too. And you ain't been to the bathroom yet. And if you did, it wasn't, it was just like a little plop, plop, fit, fit. That was it. But you, you like, think about that. 
People eat all the time. They don't go to the restroom. You ever stop and wonder what is happening to that food that I ate? Because what we what we put in our body is supposed to get in, the body gets the nutrients, squeezes out the goodness, and then it pushes out the waste, right? The body takes food in, it takes what's good, it takes all the nutrients, the good stuff, and then it's supposed to push it out. A lot of our bodies are not pushing nothing out. And we wonder why our stomachs keep going. We wonder why our waist keep going. We wonder why something in our stomach, like, man, what's going on with me? We wonder why our faces are. We wonder why the lymph nodes are messed up. We wonder why what's happening, what's happening, what's going on with me? We know. So let me land the plane. I've already said it a thousand times. A thousand times. Make up your mind. You have to fortify your mind. Before you start getting into fast, start start doing some stuff, some research on the mind. You know, the mind, strengthening your mind, making up your mind, you know, dealing with cravings. And also, this is one important thing that most people don't deal with, it's triggers. What causes us to reach for that food when we know we shouldn't? You're gonna have to deal with your why. Why do I eat this much? Why do I eat at this time? Why do I eat when I'm not even hungry? You're gonna have to deal with those triggers. And you and I would say, start dealing with those triggers before you start to fast. And they are gonna reappear while you're fasting, but you're gonna have to start dealing with the why. That's the one of the biggest parts for me. My whole process, why Antonio? Why did you eat two or three meals after 6 p.m.? Why did you, why did you have to go to Popeye's? Why did you have to go here? Why did you sit down and buy a meal that was meant for two people and eat it by yourself? And when you got done eating, you could have went back and got some more. What is going on with you, Antonio? What is triggering you? What is eating you, Gilbert Grape? That's the biggest part. We don't want to, we don't want to deal. We want to be skinny. We want to look this. We want to have a beach body. But the biggest part is what is our enemy? What is the thing that that our life and body and our body and stress and our and our surroundings? What knows your trigger and what keeps pushing the trigger that causes you to reach for your lover? Ooh, my lover, I don't feel good. It was crazy at work today. But if I can just get home, oh my God, get home and get my Doritos. And boy, let's grab me a couple of these margaritas. And if I can just go over here and get this three piece and this spicy, ooh, I'll be all right. Instead of grabbing that apple or that water, what causes the triggers in our life, the things for us to respond for that? Something happens. We all face with stuff. Some people grab an apple. Some people grab a joint. Some people grab a three-piece spicy with fries. Mega large on the, on the Pepsi. What causes the triggers? Do you know the triggers that are in your life? Do you know the things that are trying to set you up for failure? The trigger is like somebody just... Because they know. Oh, that thing knows if I do this to her, she's going to respond like this. She's going to respond this way. Got to start dealing with them triggers. You're going to start dealing with the mechanism, the program. Why am I doing the same thing over and over, getting the same results? Why am I surprised that I'm 100 pounds overweight? I keep falling for the same okie doke every week. Because if you don't start dealing with it before, you sure are going to deal with it afterwards. I'm telling you. I'm telling y'all, man, sometimes I just want to quit this thing. Sometimes I just want to quit this thing. And that stuff start coming up. Man, that food, man, that the, the, the addiction to it, the fact that something go wrong. Like right now, if something go wrong in my life or somebody mess with me, you know, I can't go and get a two-piece. I can go get some water. I can go, you, yeah, and I, I can go binge off something else. But for the most part, I'm isolated from binging off of food. You know, and what you have to do, you have to sit with it and you got to deal with it. That's what, that's what, see, food and anything that's a distraction, then when the trigger comes, it, it, we don't want to deal with it. So we go rush to the food. So we, that's what we're talking about or whatever the substance is. I don't want to deal with this. So let me go over here because this food and this thing ain't going to say nothing to me. 
This Snicker bar ain't gonna say nothing to me. This honey bun ain't gonna say nothing to me. These cupcakes ain't gonna say nothing to me. This 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 pie that I love ain't gonna say nothing to me. So I don't want to sit here and deal with the trigger. I don't want to sit here and say, man, I gotta deal with this. I can't run from this. To me, binge eating and all that stuff that I dealt with is me was I was running from something. What is it that you're running from, Antonio? You're going to keep going around this circle, Antonio, until you decide to stop and face whatever it is that's causing you to hurt yourself more and more and more and more. And sometimes I, when I'm dealing with it now, all I got is my water. And sometimes I just got to sit and sometimes I got to cry. I do. Sometimes I got to just let it run its course. And wow, when we get used to letting these things run its course and we didn't go and grab a, 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 a whatever food it is we wanted, whatever drink, and you, 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 you won, you won, you won. So when I'm fasting and when something comes up and it hits me upside my head and I don't, and I decided, you know what, I'm not going to kill my fast over, over this and I get water. Every minute that I tell those triggers and my body, the bad, the bad habits, no, I win. See, this is not about winning after three days or 30 days or 50 days. I literally win all day long. And some of us need some wins in our life. Some of us need some wins. And I win every moment. Every time I pick up this bottle and I drink, I win. Every time I sit in the room, if I need to, and cry and get it out, I win. Why? Because I didn't cry with a half of a pound cake in my lap. I cried with some water. I cried with some grape juice. <laughs> I cried <laughs> with some, you know what I'm saying, with a smoothie. But I didn't cry with, with 3,000 calories, with grease running down my face. Knowing that the moment I finish eating it, I'm gonna want some more. Why? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to get down to this soul, this unrestored soul. I'm trying to get down to that soul. And that chicken can't touch that soul. That's why we keep going back for more, for more, for more, for more. It can't touch that soul. It can't remedy that thing. It can't heal that thing. It can only give you the distraction for a few moments. And once all that's said and done. And the store is closed and you can't go to Popeye's. You got to deal with it. Oh, no, let me go to sleep. Oh, no, toss and turn. I hope my, my chat today has blessed you. That's how you prepare. Get your mind right. Your mind is, is 99% of this. Man, after four or five days, your body like, I'm cool. Guys, I wish I had them here. It's like I drink water all the time and juice sometimes. Like my body can really only, my body only really likes thin juices and um, like something, like if I get a smoothie, it has to be cold. Like if I get a small container of like, like I showed y'all today, like the green onion soup, it takes me an hour to, to, to drink that. Um, if I get some cream of chicken or cream of celery, when I first started this, I could I could eat it. I had some homemade broth and you know I could drink it but now I can't it's like my body's like I eat a little bit it's crazy you think a small little I'm talking about like six eight ounces the body starts like you don't need it and it's crazy you don't the body's like you good you got a lot of fat on you you get a little bit of it get your little minerals and all that and I just put it on the side. Yeah, I can drink some juice, like some grape juice or something like that. I can drink that pretty readily. Um, you know, but a little bit at a time, but it's a little bit at a time. I'm, I'm sipping on it. It's not like it's crazy. It's it goes from it goes from just drinking fast and just all the stuff coming down. You're going crazy to the body's like, okay, a little bit, you put it down, you drive for a while, Timmy. Okay, you get another sip. You know, blah, blah, blah. I like ice. Like I love ice from like Mod Pizza or Sonic. Give me some ice, pour a little juice in there, whatever. I had bought me some juicy juice from uh, Dollar Tree. I got some juicy juice, y'all. Six of them, little little things for like a dollar. Well, dollar twenty five. Sip on that. It's only like sixty calories. You know what I mean? I do that, but my body won't let me take on a whole lot of calories. It's so.
calories. So it's so crazy. The body starts saying, you don't need all this. Now I go to the gym, my body be screaming for some, some calories and I give it a little bit, but I don't really need it. I don't need it. I mean, today I weighed myself again. I, you know, I ain't say nothing. I lost another three pounds in the last, what, two, three days. Three more pounds. Boom. Went from 269. What was that? To 259 to today, 256. And it's just like, I'm on autopilot. You know, whatever you do, the body will respond. If you stop eating, the body doesn't want to eat. If you eat a lot, the body gonna keep wanting to eat. It's whatever you feed, that's what is gonna live. Whatever you feed, that's what's gonna live. If you decide to, to feed your body good things, again, you start a fast, don't just stop a fast cold turkey. Don't do that, don't do that to your body. Toxins are gonna come out. So we, we get the mind right, we set ourselves. we say, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. If you need to set a goal, you do. You start incorporating raw foods into your regular diet. You don't just stop. You should start incorporating raw foods for a week or two. Eventually, you'll cycle off of the, all that stuff. We got to get rid of the processed foods. And then now you're just doing fruits and low glycemic foods, you know, like, like apples and blueberries and, and nuts and stuff like that. And then eventually you go into your fast because you need your, the body needs the time for the toxins. And then you flow over. So you may do a water fast. Or you may say, you know, I'm going to do a green juice fast. What I mean by that? Like collards. Like it's like in, in grocery stores, you can buy the green juice. I'm not talking about the green machine with all those sugar. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the green stuff. And you can look at the back and you can tell shard and all other stuff. Not that other, you know, the other stuff that's super sugary. No, not that. That's what I'm talking about. And then you start cycling yourself in between water and these pure green juices, celery juice, all that other stuff. Some of you might juice your own stuff. And then when you get done, you're ready to eat again. You can go online and research, okay, how do we break a fast? That's the thing. How do you make a fast? How do you start? How do you endure it? And then how do you break it? Okay, maybe introducing some watermelon, some little things, a little grits. But if you go Google it, you'll find all so many different scenarios of how you can um, break a fast y'all take care of yourself <laughs> you know today is day number 50 for me I have to be on my P's and Q's every day I see myself in the mirror I see how you know I'm looking 10 years younger I'm looking like a I'm looking like a 35 year old <laughs> I can see my clothes fit me great but all of this and I haven't I'm not even halfway to my goal yet I'm literally trying to lose 97 pounds that's that's where I'm going. But it's not the physical thing that I'm that that really is it. What is really it is the mind. You'll discover how strong you really are. Some of y'all think you're weak. Some of you beat yourself up every day. I mean that one of the first things, oh man, I forgot to tell y'all that some people kind of came on, they left, but the thing that gave me the power to really go forward with this was when I accepted myself. And I said, I will not be ashamed of me another day of my life. And I've said this before, and that's when I took off my shirt. Y'all know how long it took me to take off my shirt? It took me two years, literally. It's, it has taken me two years to get the guts to take off my shirt and to fast again. I knew in 2020 that I was supposed to do this again. And I knew I was supposed to take off my shirt because I wanted, because I knew I had to accept myself publicly. People see me, whatever, and I had to say, you know what, it doesn't matter. Because that was a big deal to me, of my public perception and how people saw me. I'm not telling you to take your shirt off, please. But for myself, it was an act of defiance. I had to, I said, you know what, I don't care. Tony, I don't care. And yeah, I talk to myself like that sometimes. I don't care if you gain all the weight, I don't care. If you lose it, it doesn't matter. I decided before I started that I was going to love myself no matter what. You have to decide from the beginning, before you push away the plate, before you push away one pork chop, you have to decide that you love you no matter what the results are. You have to decide that you will love you no matter what the results are. 
I'm going to say it one more time. Before you stop eating anything, you have to decide that you're going to love yourself no matter what the results are, that your love for you is not based on how many pounds you lose. And if you can fit in those pants you had on in, <laughs> in the ninth grade, it don't matter. You have to decide in the beginning because you have to settle yourself in that love. Listen to me, man. You have to settle yourself in that love. That you know that it's not about the results. That you're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna love yourself anyway. I, and I have to. And when I took my shirt off, man, I'm telling you, it was like I sat there for 30 minutes before I post. I had it right there, and I wouldn't press it because all this anxiety was coming up. What is people gonna say? What is people gonna say? What is people gonna say? He was this and that, and I threw all that. I didn't. I didn't take any of that stuff into account. And I said, it doesn't matter because I know the moment that I hit the send button, I'm going to free myself from prison. Boy. Whew. Boy, I knew, I knew that when I hit that button, my, my, the, 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 the stuff that had been holding me down, telling me I'm ugly, all the voices from the people growing up used to tease me and all this stuff, stuff I shared on my first live when I started, man, all those voices came in my head of all that negativity, people laughing at me since I was in the third grade and up. I've been talked about my body since I was a little kid. No little kid should have to endure that. You just are free. And that's how you know you're looking at yourself in the mirror because somebody starts talking about one of your body parts and you're like, what are you talking about? Well, what, what's wrong with me? Why am I not? I, so that means something's wrong. Everybody's laughing. So so what do I do? I start hiding. I start, man, I have to take all that stuff into account. No matter if it's true, no matter if it's a lie, no matter if it's somewhere in between, it don't even matter. Tony, I love you. Some of you need to touch yourself on the chest. Go look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I love you. And the results, good or bad, won't take that away. And boy, when I did that, took that shirt off, had my son film something for me, and I put that thing out there. And yeah, people hit my inbox. Yeah, some people said some things. Some people talked about, man, you got man boobs. And blah, blah. Yeah, man, yeah. Some people said some stuff. They did. I put out stuff and they see my body and they say a little stuff crazy. Yeah. But it doesn't matter anymore. Some of it is funny. But it no matter if it's funny or truthful, I ain't upset. Why? Because I love me. And why? That picture, those pictures, those videos, every time I post something, it's in the past. I got better. I lost more weight. I got more in shape. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So those pictures are yesterday or yesterweek or yestermonth or yesteryear. That's not even who I am. So when somebody laughs at an old picture or video and I'm doing what I'm doing now, it doesn't matter because that's not who I am. That's who I was. <laughs> that's what I used to look like. That ain't me no more. And so... I want to encourage y'all, deal with the mind, deal with the shame, the shame, not the shame of somebody else. The, the greatest shame we ever, ever give ourselves, we ever receive is from ourselves, not from somebody else. Now we use, he said this, she said this. Yeah, we do. We use that. But really we shame ourselves. We're more embarrassed of ourselves than anybody could ever be. We've said more damning and damaging things to ourselves than anybody could ever give us. So don't blame people. Stop blaming folks. Yeah, that stuff happened to me, but I had to say, you know what? I, how do I interact with that? How do I ex intercept that? I I love myself anyway. I said, I love you anyway. That's how you take the teeth out of that thing. You take the teeth out of the tiger by loving yourself. You take the teeth out of the words by saying, I love me anyway. And I'm doing something about this. Because it's not about somebody love you or what they look you look like. It's about the fact that you want to be healthy. Man, I know that when I drop the weight, I know I feel better. Man, I don't go to bed with real pain. I mean, I ain't been to bed, you know, with real pain in a long time, except when I drank that power aid, I mean, the body armor at night. But other than that, 
I haven't had no major no major pain in my body. Yeah, I feel a little aches and stuff like that because I'm working out and my body and you know my muscles and my tendons and all that stuff. I feel that, but I don't feel this chronic pain that I'm like, whoo, what is happening? What's you know, I'm just in the bed and body just throbbing. Y'all know what this feel like the body just throbbing, the legs is just gang, gang, gang. You rubbing the leg down, you trying to figure it out, and nothing you do, nothing you do helps. But but this, this has been helping. And to go just to have a day without pain. I mean, I ran a mile for the first time and I don't know. I ran a mile without stopping today. I wasn't running fast. Maybe like 3.8, 4.0. But I literally jogged slash ran a mile for the first time. No pain. My leg wasn't hurting. My back didn't hurt. The bottom of my feet didn't hurt. Oh my goodness. I literally finished a mile. I was so elated. I was so happy. I literally ran a mile without stopping today. I said I wasn't going to run until I got to 225, 230. But here I am, 256, and I ran it, and I could have kept going. That's what's, I did it on live today to celebrate day number 50. I actually probably could have ran another mile, but I just stopped it. I didn't feel tired. I wasn't like aching and I'm sitting there running like, wow, I'm really doing this without eating solid food. It's amazing. I want to thank y'all for connecting with me. My cash app is, I'm just joking. I'm playing around. I, I, I always, I mess with people like that. I love being able to give because what I have God gave to me and people or people shared with me. Somebody took time and poured into my life. I did. I've done a lot of research. I've listened to a lot of lectures. I read a lot of. Um, I read a lot of um, reports and and medical journals. And I just wish we would take care of our underlying issues. I really wish we would take care of ourselves. Yeah, you know, COVID is important. You know. But man, this underlying stuff, COVID linked in with a person that's unhealthy, that's a bad, bad situation. But when at least you're healthy and your immune system is good, you can at least put up a fight. Some people can't even put up a fight. They have nothing good in reserves. And got COVID still eating fried chicken. Got COVID still, still eating hamburgers. Got COVID still eating pork. Got COVID still drinking Coke. Got COVID, won't even drink a glass of water. Won't even eat an apple. <laughs> the apple matches the body. The food that God made matches the body. Can you imagine trying to put Kool-Aid in your car? It wasn't designed for that. Anyway, I'm going to let y'all go. Thank y'all for allowing me to serve you. And if you guys ever want to connect with me on a deeper level, you can always go over to YouTube. Please follow my page, Body Reset Nation. Don't just subscribe, but click the little bell because I put up new videos. You know, I try to encourage people, but I also show me mostly working out and things that I'm doing in the gym or outside. Um, I'm really trying to get this message out, guys. So if y'all would just help me spread the message, I would appreciate it. I'm not no trainer. I'm literally just somebody telling a story of somebody going from 300 pounds to 203. And once I get to 203, my plan is I'm gonna start traveling. So y'all go ahead and, and get me a plane ticket or a train ticket. And what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start going to different states and cities. I'm gonna start working out with people. So somebody already has offered to buy me a ticket. This is crazy, from Arizona. So I'm gonna go out to um, the Phoenix, Scottsdale, Arizona area pretty soon. And we're gonna we're gonna hike some mountains. We're gonna do some workouts. We're gonna um, try some local cuisine. What I'm gonna do when I finish my fast, when I start doing that, I'm gonna start eating food, and I'm gonna start telling you guys how this food is making me feel. I'm gonna start showing you guys, okay, I'm eating this food, and this is how I feel, and this is this caused me to gain weight. This caused me to lose weight. I'm gonna start doing some things like intermittent fasting and OMAD, which is one meal a day. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break. I'm breaking my body down. I'm gonna rebuild it 
But I'm going to take people along with me for the journey so they'll know, okay, boom, boom, boom. This is how this food responds to my body working out. What happens if I start eating like I was before, but I keep the workout routine? What happens if I continue to keep fried foods out of my diet? Okay, what happens if I eat a Mediterranean diet? Okay, what if I, I ate this right here, but I don't like the way that made me feel, made my leg feel funny. Uh, man, it, you know, it caused me to feel like I was bogged down. I'm gonna document those things. I'm not just gonna get off my fast and be like, no, I'm actually gonna keep working out. But when I do reintroduce solid foods, I'm gonna actually talk about it but travel and meet people. So I may come to, you know, uh, Atlanta, BJ. We come down there, man, you know, whatever we need to do. And me and you go, we work out together. We go eat some food, go to some vegan spots, some other places, you know, some soul food. And we eat and we chop it up and then we work out together. We can invite people that want to come hang with us and we can do that. And I, I just love to, 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 to do that whole fitness and, and, and travel and uh, food, fitness, travel, and food, you know, and just start taking it on the road. So <laughs> taking it on the road, like, I appreciate that, man, for real. So take it on the road, go find a park, you know, different things in the city. You know, let's go do that. Let's go work out for 20, 30 minutes. Let's go get us something to eat. Let us promote some businesses that are that are making whole, whole, wholesome food because you don't have to starve yourself. There are a lot of good restaurants out here that are making some good, wholesome food, tasty food, got seasoning in it. You know what I'm saying? They understand. They got that obey. They got that that grease season. Y'all don't know nothing about. You know, <laughs> they they use air fryers. They're they're using creative ways to um to do things. Like you you would think like, wow, this is amazing. Like I saw a show the other day about a lady has um a restaurant. A sister got a restaurant in St. Louis that they say has one of the best vegan sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? Like period. I want to go to St. Louis, work out, you know, that's my old stomping ground. And then go, go to this lady's restaurant and taste her cauliflower sandwich. Uh, um, yeah. Cauliflower, um, um, Buffalo sandwich. Uh, a friend of mine in, 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 in Atlanta, the, the, the vegan mom, she does that too. I'm going to go back to, to Memphis and go work out and then go eat some of her food and talk about it. And how does it make me feel and all that? That's, that's what the vision is all about. So, so yeah, y'all, 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 you know, whatever ideas y'all have, I would appreciate because we're going to, that's just where I'm going. I'm just going to get down to this 203, got to make sure I get down or I may start it before I get to 203. I don't know. But the biggest thing is I want to break it down so people can see, okay, this is how he landed the fast. Okay. And this is his process of getting back on it. So it's going to take me, you know, once I get on with the fast, say if I go a hundred days, it's going to take me probably at least half of that to get my digestive system back up. So it won't be any time like tomorrow or next week. Um, it just depends on when I decide to uh, to to stop, and then I gotta give myself the opportunity to um, to to get my digestive system back up and going. But I, I would love whether it's it could be home meals. It don't really matter, bro. Like I don't care. But that's the vision, and hopefully we're gonna leave behind. You know, when I'm long gone, hopefully at a hundred and something. But I'm going to leave behind a trail that a lot of people can say, wow, okay, we can follow this. Even if they don't do what I do, they can follow the inspiration for them and they can get inspired or a little more juice added to whatever it is they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So, yep. So I, I want to say thank y'all for connecting. If you guys have any questions, you can always leave them a comment, hit me up on the inbox. Um, y'all know the YouTube. I'm on Instagram. I had TikTok, but it was too much work. And so I need some people to come along and help me with that. So I'm thinking about working on an app, Body Reset Nation app. Um, but again, that's going to come as, you know what I'm saying, things start popping and, you know, yeah, yeah. So thank y'all. Y'all have you a great night. Great, great weekend. Relax. Try not to let nobody make you stress. <laughs> Don't let them make you stressed out, man. Stay away from stressful people if you can. Cause they got they got the button to the trigger and you and you want to stay away you don't want that you want that trigger to go into retirement for a while <laughs> all right and make sure you laugh a lot man make sure you laugh some of y'all too serious i know i look serious but i'm silly uh but some of y'all man y'all just go put on a comedy or something go 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 look at yourself in the mirror maybe that make you laugh i don't know but go go laugh enjoy yourself and um 
because we only got one life on this side, man. I'm telling you. And it's so worth it. Man, our life is so valuable, man. Love you guys. See y'all soon. All right? Peace.